your three minute warning for the, the question period. Okay, so Jin Wong from. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Jin Wang from uh, CISA and ICTP. Um, it's glad for me to participate in this conference and uh, give a talk here. Today, my topic is the sliding and pinning superlubric 2D material interfaces. There are several points I want to cover today the background of structural superlubricity, some cases about periodic boundary condition studies and open boundary condition studies, also some further generalizations. Superlubricity is the um, premise is an ultra low sliding friction due to the incommensurate contacts. And usually there are, uh, we could achieve incommensurate contacts by lattice mismatching and uh, twisting. 2D materials like graphene, hexagonal burn nitride, and, and uh, molybdenum disulfide are good candidates for superlubricity since it's uh, atomically smooth interfaces and a relatively high in plane stiffness. So start from the several decades ago, people start to pursue the application of superlubricity in real, uh, in real world. And, but before that, the friction behavior of superlubricity should be well understood beyond the present state. So the first thing I want to talk about uh, some simulation result about period boundary condition twisted by layer graphene, supported by layer graphene. Here is the simulation model. We drag the upper layer and uh, the lower layer is uh, sta static, stationary. And we highlight the central green region in case you cannot see it's moving because of period boundary condition. And some detailed simulation protocol are listed here. So here in the right figure is our simulation result. The blue dots, um, the friction per atom as a function of the twist angle, misfit angle. And uh, you could see the friction increase as we decrease the twist angle from 30 degree and saturate at about 10 degree. And actually we, uh, derived some theory for this, and uh, it agree with our MD simulation pretty well. These are our analytical, analytical uh, expression. C is a prefactor, and it has expression here. M is the atomic mass. Eta is the damping coefficient, characterize the energy dissipating rate. V0 is the sliding velocity. And the important parameter H here is the outer plane corrugation of the Mori structure. Um, as you may, f uh, may find here, all other parameters does not really uh, correlated with uh, this twist angle theta, but this H. So we should uh, talk more details about this H. Firstly, see some simulation result. With different twist angle, we optimize the bilayer structure, and there are three typical regimes. Here are the 0.4 degree, 6 degree, and 30 degree. Um, the upper panel is the outer plane corrugation uh, height structure, and the middle panel is the structural profile. The lower panel is the maximum, low, uh, minimum, uh, the coordinate, and the average is the coordinate of different twist angle. And benefit from uh, our uh, analytical derivation, we have a, an analytical expression here for this uh, corrugation height h. So for twist angle larger than 10 degree, the Mori size lambda is so tiny. So in, the, in this denominator, the first term dominates and uh, it is related to the bending stiffness of graphene, this D. And if the twist angle decreases down to 10 degree, lambda, the Mori size again, becomes larger. And now the second term wins again. And when twist angle keeps decreasing, this lambda, lambda keeps increasing. So this term, are, are okay, these two terms can actually be canceled out. So this whole, whole, uh, whole formula becomes uh, constant. That is the reason for the saturation of the H at the small twist angle. And apart from these two regime, actually there is an additional regime as you could see here for twist angle smaller than three degree. The structural profile looks like a flat tie. It's no more sinusoid like the larger twist angle, so it's a flat tie regime. Some people believe this um, flat tie regime, which correspond to the re Mori reconstruction and uh, give rise to larger AB and BA region, should be overpaint. So to answer this question, we perform a quasi-static simulation to extract the maximum static friction. And you can see here in the left figure, no matter the twist angle is smaller or larger than three degree, the static friction is uh, in the same order of magnitude and much smaller than zero to the AB stacking case. And for a specific case, 0.6 degree, we calculate the pressure dependence and extract the coefficient of friction in the order of 10 to minus seven. So basically we believe this flat tie regime is also super weak. 
So far, we talked about uh, the bilayer graphene with purely a boundary condition. But in real nature, everything is finite sized. So we switch to some finite size simulation, and the lower left plot is some um, uh, mimics the, the, the experiment setup, and the lower upper figure is our simulation setup. Now we use four, four layer of graphene. The lower two are infinitely large, uh, mimic the substrate. The upper two are finite size, mimic the slider, and uh, all of them are, have these z-directional spring to mimic the uh, normal, mo uh, normal elastic modulars of uh, graphite. And the slider is dragged by a pulling spring with spring constant kp, and it's sliding with constant velocity v. So to some extent, our simulation model is uh, similar to Pronton Tomlinson model. And in PT model, uh, two regime are divided by a dimensionless parameter cosi, which describe the competence between the sliding energy barrier u0 and the lateral stiffness kp. When cosi is smaller than one smooth sliding and larger than one stick slip, so borrow this idea into our simulation with the fixed lattice spacing and the sliding energy barrier. We could switch between these two regimes by adjusting the lateral stiffness of the spring. And here are two typical friction traces for two regimes. For superweak regime, the lateral force evolves sinusoidally. But for stick slip regime, it's an apparent saw tooth function, so stick slip uh, sliding. And correspondingly, for area dependence of the kinetic friction, the superweak regime gives a, a linear dependence, but for edge-controlled stick-slip regime, it's a sublinear dependence. And for velocity dependence, again, superweak regime, blue one gives a linear dependence, and the stick-slip regime, at the beginning, at low velocity, it's a apparently sublinear, and then return to linear. The crossover velocity could be determined by this uh, equation. And uh, could we use our simulation without understand some existing experiment? Here in the right plot uh, are two typical experiment results, starting the friction, uh, the friction dependence on velocity, and it is the logarithmic dependence. So friction scales linearly as log v. Firstly, we replot this experiment data and then extrapolate it with the logarithmic function up to the high velocity range and compare it with our MD simulation result of stick slip regime. You can see that not only the magnitude of friction, but also the slope, the variation tendency, agree with this experiment extrapolation pretty well. And compared to super regime in our simulation, you can see if we choose the same velocity range, then the uh, experiment friction should be orders of magnitude much larger than our super regime result. This result indicates that uh, the real experiment should be belong to stick slip regime. And it turns out that it should be, because in real experiment uh, with typical lateral stiffness of the FM tip, 10 Newton per meter, and lattice spacing, and the sliding energy barrier extracted from these papers, it, they give the uh, parameter side larger than one, so belong to stick slip regime. And finally, the temperature dependence. In RMD simulation with stick slip regime, friction decrease exponentially as temperature increase. And in superbrick regime, it increase linearly. And again, in experiment, existing experiment, all of them friction decrease exponentially uh, as the temperature increase. Okay, so far, people may ask, you talk about some nanoscale friction, but you want to use this knowledge to understand the microscale experiment. How, how, how is that possible? Yeah, it's uh, reasonable because the smallest experiment now is still much larger than the maximum size of the simulation. But benefit from the supercomputer and the latest uh, high efficient algorithm, we for the first time perform all atom, all atom M MD simulation to fill in this gap. And in the right plot is our result. These red circles are our simulation result with different uh, size from nanometer to micrometer, billion atoms, and uh, compared with uh, some of the existing experiments, and most uh, from uh, everyone here. Uh, as the first thing you could see, okay, this size scaling is again linear dependence between friction and contactoria, which agree with our nanoscale simulation, and uh, our simulation are nearly parallel to the existing experiment values, but uh, are a little bit smaller. That could be, uh, the reason could be, okay, we fixed with 30 degree twisted, 
So give the, should give the uh, smallest uh, kinetic dissipation. And also in our simulation, there's no defects, no contaminants, no adsorbates, so everything is perfect. So, which could be the reason to give a smaller friction compared to the existing experiment. But uh, the linear scaling seems to be the same. Okay, so far we talked about the period boundary condition with three, with different twisted uh, angle, and there are three regimes containing the interesting flat tie regime and open boundary condition, two regime, stick slip and super break. So the next uh, question will naturally be, what about open boundary condition but flat tie regime, small twist angle? So here we perform some simulation with the two degree, which should be the flat tire. And uh, we start the static and a kinetic friction of two degree and compared it with 30 degree results. From the left figure, you could see not, uh, no matter it's uh, static or kinetic, two degree result is always larger than 30 degree. And if we focus on this two degree result, you could find some fluctuation behavior. It turns out that this fluctuation periodicity is correspond to the Mori size for two degree is seven nanometers. And what is the reason for this fluctuation behavior? So we actually, it turns out that the ABBA region that exposed to the edge become the pinning point, which gives rise to large kinetic friction. We pick two different sizes here, the local maximum, 10 nanometer, red one, and the local minimum friction, uh, 14 nanometers. You could see for this 10 nanometer red one, the boundary cross directly through the sixth ABBA region. But for 14 nanometers, all AB and BA region are hidden inside the boundary. So which sh should be reasonable. And now, since we could already tune this um, boundary pinning effect by changing the size, we no longer to need we no longer need to change this KP. So we fix the KP, but the tuning the size, thus tuning the sliding energy barrier and switch between stick slip regime and uh, um, super weak regime. So for 10 nanometer case, again the friction traces show a stick slip behavior, and for 14 nanometers it's a smooth sliding, and our velocity scaling result verified this. So for two, uh, two degree, 14 nanometers, this blue one scales linearly, and for 10 nanometers, it scales apparently sublinearly. And apart from the twisting, so we, we always talk about twisting, so apart from that, we could also change uh, the incommensurability, more rescaling by changing the lattice mismatching. So here we actually use a simple way to change the by actual strain to apply a uniformly distributed by actual strain to the substrate, uh, thus to introduce some uh, more rescaling into the system. And again, here shows some uh, uh, similar fluctuation behavior. And this uh, local maximum, one, three, five, give this uh, stick slip uh, friction trace, and the local minimum gives the uh, super brick friction traces. And for specific cases, graphene sliding over hexano nitrite with the uh, inherent uh, lattice mismatching about 2%, we also find this uh, similar fluctuation behavior, the periodicity correspond to the Mori size. Thus, for a 30 degree twisted misaligned case, there's no such fluctuation because the Mori is so tiny. Mm. So basically, that's all of my talk today and a uh, brief summary. Firstly, different uh, structural regime due to competition from interlayer and interlayer interaction and a smaller than three degree, interesting flat tie regime. All of these cases are super weak. And uh, two different friction re regime due to the edge pinning effect. Super weak and stick slip <coughs> regime, they have different area, velocity, and temperature scaling. <coughs> and finally, recovering and extending many results in the existing experiment. The overall picture of tank here should apply to general super weak and phases. So that's my talk today. Thanks uh, for your attention. Question. Okay, questions. There's one over here. Oh, our speaker, our uh, microphone assistant has been kidnapped. So, but I've got a second. I've got a backup plan. So here's your. Speak right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much for a very ni very nice talk. Uh, my question is about um, sort of elasticity. I, I'm, assume, am I, I'm assuming correct that all the simulations were rigid, essentially. So you are sliding. Are flexible or layers are flexible? Okay. Okay. Did you did you ever see sort of interlocking so that you have because of elastic interaction you can have local regions that interlock and that destroy can destroy superlubricity. It depends a bit on the stiffness. Uh, 
Yes, um, and uh, you mean you mean at very large scale, and then elasticity could, could destroy everything. And we estimate that uh, size that should be um, millimeter size. So the the shell shell stress and the shell modulus of the material, and which gives a very large uh, size, should be in in order of millimeters. Okay, that's for for graphite and HBN and yeah, uh, so yeah. forth. Okay, so if you go to to softer materials, it may actually move to probably yeah, to might small. reduce to micrometer or even yeah. smaller. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Good, thank you. Uh, I see that there is a question in the chat. Are you able to open that up? Oh, could you could you read it, read the question into the microphone? Oh, okay. okay thank uh, you. Okay, so I'm not sure who's there. So, how you estimated the contact area between atoms? Is the estimated contact area load dependent? If yes, how it looks like the dependence? Okay, it, it actually a good question because for 2D materials, we already assume it's uh, atomic uh, atomically smooth, so it's uh, fully contacted. And um, so we, we believe no matter how large the normal pressure if you apply, it should be, the, the contact area should not uh, change too much. Um, and uh, actually we, we, we have some, um, we have some uh, result about uh, the, the, the normal pressure dependence. And uh, where is that? So actually when we apply this pressure to this open boundary cases, the, we, we could extract uh, the friction coefficient of kinetic friction is in the order of 10 to minus 4 from negative to positive. So basically, we think the contact area is, um, remains a constant. OK, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the okay. question. And I have a question. Uh, in your setup, uh, you have, can you say, which layers are flexible and which layers are rigid? Uh, all layers here fall in the left or upper Model, or four layers are flexible. They're all flexible. Yeah. So, th so there's no substrate, correct? Uh, strictly speaking, yeah, no substrate. By, okay. by the bottom and top layer are tethered to some of these springs. Okay. So, yeah. so what I'm wondering is, uh, in a you know practical uh, application, you are likely to have the graphene supported on a substrate, yeah. and it's very difficult, of course, to make that truly atomically flat. People have seen even the atomic scale roughness of silicon oxide, for example, yeah, it still can have some effect. So have you thought about, or would, would you expect that there to be some influence if you had some roughness of the substrate, of yeah. a substrate? Yeah, actually, that's, uh, that's true. And in real, in real nature, the, 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 the atomic, atomic smooth could not really be reached, achieved. And we started that uh, in our previous uh, work. And uh, if the corrugation, so if, there's, uh, if the corrugation reaches three axioms, so one another atomic layer, then the superbrick behavior could be, to some extent, destroyed. So the friction increases uh, several orders of magnitude. Okay. The, yeah, okay. So, so roughness can have a strong effect, a strong and bad effect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Any last questions? One over here. Yeah, thanks. That's, that's probably very nice. But just to see, I understand. You say there is no substrate. How can you apply pressure on your on your system where it doesn't just fall apart? You hold it on at zero at the, the low level. Your first graphene plane, if yeah. you're applying a pressure and there is nothing behind, it should just go down. Uh -huh. oh, okay, you, you mean the, again this, this model? So, yeah. so actually we apply some uh, z-directional screen to restrict uh, the uh, outer plane uh, movement of the bottom layer. So, you, so it cannot really... Move. So it's soft on the plane, but it's hard on... Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's soft in plane and uh, also out of plane, but uh, the, the, out of the the direction movement are actually restricted by, by some uh, 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 non-existent -ex springs, so to mimic the normal uh, elasticity of the material. Thanks for the question. Very good. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. And our next speaker will be Roland Benowitz from the Leibniz Institute for New Materials in Saarbrücken, Germany. So two talks from Saarbrücken.